Okay, during this video, we're going to talk about determining the atomic radius and ionic radius of our uh, atoms and how the periodic table can show us the trends for that also. So when you talk about atomic radius, or basically the size of an atom, or the size of an ion, uh, we really can't determine size by measuring from the outside of an electron cloud to the other side of the outside of an electron cloud. And the problem is the electron cloud is something that's really hard for us to actually find the edge of because of those areas of probability. So what we do instead, um, we use a process called X-ray crystallography. Um, it's basically a fancy version of what Rutherford did in terms of the gold foil experiment, where we beam X-rays into these different crystalline structures. Those rays bounce off, and they actually can help us pinpoint the nuclei between different atoms. So because we can find the one nucleus compared to the other nucleus, and know that distance across, um, and if we do that either with covalently bonded stuff, or ionically bonded stuff, we can find the distance between two nuclei. Uh, from that, we're able to basically mathematically calculate the distance between the nucleus and that outer edge of the electron cloud. So it takes a little bit more math, a little bit more processing, but it's a better way for us to try to determine the size of an atom than try to deal with the electron clouds as we uh, look at these. Okay, So when we're looking at size, we're really looking at, at the size between the nucleus and that outer edge. Uh, of our electron cloud, or we're solving for the radius of these different um, small atoms. Okay. Now, when we take a look at atomic radius, you'll notice uh, if we actually graph the different size of an atoms. You know, lithium is much smaller than neon, and sodium is much smaller than argon, and potassium is much. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm saying it backwards. Lithium is much bigger than neon. Sodium is much bigger than argon. Potassium is much bigger than krypton, and so forth. So as we notice, lithium to neon, that's moving left to right across the periodic table. So as you go from left to right across the periodic table, um, your atoms actually get smaller. And that trend continues for all the different groups, sodium to argon, potassium to krypton, and so forth. So if you have your periodic table out, take a look. Potassium across to krypton, we're actually going to see that potassium is the biggest element in that period, and krypton is the smallest. Now, if you look at the chart, not by the individual lines, but actually just take your alkali metals, lithium, sodium, potassium, and rubidium, and we look here, we see that in this case, lithium is the smallest of our uh, alkali metals, and they tend to get bigger as you go down the periodic table. So moving down from one energy level to the next, you tend to get bigger every time, okay? And that same pattern holds true across the whole table. So xenon would be the biggest noble gas of the four that we see on this chart and so forth. Okay? We would expect cesium to be bigger than rub rubidium and francium to even be bigger if they showed those graphs on this particular chart. So from that information we can determine our basic trend. Now our trend here shows us that as you move from left to right the atomic size gets smaller and as you move down the table it gets bigger. So our biggest element is francium way over here. And actually our smallest one in size is helium, way over here, okay? Even though helium is heavier than hydrogen, it's actually size-wise smaller than hydrogen is, okay? Um, and that we're going to talk about why here in a second. So if you take a look at the reasons why, as you move across the period, we keep adding more and more electrons to that same energy level. So if you imagine electrons have a negative charge and protons have a positive charge, well, we're adding more protons, we're adding more electrons. The result is more protons, more electrons on the same energy level, and that attractive force, or the electromagnetic force we call that, actually causes um, the electrons to be pulled in tighter to the, to the nucleus. So it's kind of like having bigger and bigger magnets or more magnets. If you have that, the attractive force gets greater and greater and greater and pulls everything in tighter. So the result here is as you go from left to right across a, a period, the atom actually gets smaller. And it has to do with the fact that you're getting a stronger electromagnetic force, forcing those electron clouds to actually get smaller and crunch down closer to the nucleus because of the attractive force between those more protons and more electrons. Now, as you go down a group, you might think, well, shouldn't that same effect happen? We're getting more protons, more electrons. So shouldn't it get smaller as you go down a group also? Which might be a decent idea. The, however, the big difference is 
in the groups, as you go down them, you're actually going down energy levels, which means you're putting electrons further and further away on these higher energy levels. So because you're adding more principal energy levels, you're putting electrons further away, just physically speaking, they're further from the actual nucleus now on those outer energy levels. As a result, the atom actually gets bigger. Now, we do have a secondary effect, okay? So there's something called electron shielding, which is way at the bottom of our notes down here. What happens is this, as you get more and more electrons on the inner levels, those outer electrons actually feel those inner electrons. And those outer electrons, because they're negatively charged, and the inner electrons are negatively charged, they repel each other. So these inner electrons actually kind of push the outer electrons further away. As a result, the nucleus can't hold on to them as well, and the whole atom gets bigger overall. So we got two things going on as you go down a group. The first is you're putting electrons at higher energy levels. So that's probably your most important or your, your biggest one or your principal reason. The secondary effect is something called electron shielding, where the, elect the inner electrons actually kind of shield or push those outer electrons even a little bit further away, causing the atom to get even bigger than what would be expected from this process alone. Okay, so two things going on here. Uh, the primary is up here, your secondary effect is down here, okay? Now if we take a look at the size of an atom versus the size of its ion, okay? What you see in red here is atoms, what you see in blue are cations, what you see in green are anions. So these cations, if you notice, are always smaller than their correlating neutral atom. And even within the ions, if you are a 2 plus to a 3 plus, the 3 plus even gets smaller than the 2 plus, and so forth. If you look over here, the anions tend to be bigger than their neutral atoms. So when you get to a negative ion, they are bigger than the resulting or the original atom they came from. Okay? So let's talk about why that kind of happens. Well, first of all, um, here's another example. Sodium neutral, sodium ion gets smaller. Chlorine neutral, chlorine ion gets bigger. Okay? So in all cases, when you become a cation or a positive ion, you are always smaller than your original atom. When you become a negative ion or an anion, you will always get bigger. Okay? So let's take a look at why that happens. So for cations, you're losing electrons, right? And you're losing those electrons from the highest energy levels, if you remember that from our previous unit. So if you take electrons out of the highest energy level, those energy levels no longer exist. So the actual cation gets smaller. In addition, remember, ionizing is all about electrons. So if you take electrons away to, get it to become positively charged, your number of protons have stayed the same. So for example, if we take a look at calcium, calcium has 20 protons, 20 electrons in it. However, if you ionize calcium, it becomes a 2 plus charge. With a 2 plus charge, now calcium only has 18 electrons. Well, you still have 20 protons pulling on these now 18 electrons instead of the 20 electrons from before. So 20 positive charges pulling on 18, you no longer have a 1 to 1 ratio, and those 20 protons can actually pull those 18 electrons in tighter. So the result is we actually have a stronger effective force coming from the nucleus. Now it really doesn't change the nucleus's force, but how it affects the electrons is greater because your ratio is greater than one to one there. Okay? So two reasons. One, we take electrons away from the highest energy level, and two, the effective force becomes stronger. Now for anions, uh, you're doing the exact opposite. You're still adding electrons, but now you're not, oh, sorry, you are adding electrons now, but not protons. So as a result, your protons are kind of outnumbered now. So you have more electrons than protons. So as a result, you can't hold on as tight. Um, the more electrons you have, the harder it is for those protons to hold them in tight and they get further and further away. Kind of imagine if you're trying to, let's say, keep you know, a bunch of kindergartners together. And if you had two or three, you could probably corral two or three pretty easy. But if all of a sudden you had five or six or seven or eight kindergartners and you're trying to keep them all nice together in a, in a kind of row or a group, it'll get harder and harder to do because the more you have, the farther and further spread out they're going to get. So the same idea here. The protons only have so much pull for being positively charged. And if you have more electrons than protons, then they can actually get further away and get bigger. Okay? 
Okay, guys, that ends our little video on uh, ions and atomic size. Thank you.